Hey everyone, it's David. Exciting news from the Cool Worlds Laboratory here at Columbia University. Today we're announcing the discovery of a truly Jupiter-like planet transiting a distant star. Remarkably, this is the first time we've ever seen such an object. Just to remind you how the transit method works, we essentially look at a distant star, measure its brightness over time, and if a planet passes in front, it will block out some of the light for a short amount of time. And that's how we can detect them. The big deal about this is that the transit method allows us to do a whole lot more than the other methods. We can not only tell its size, its inclination, we can even go and look for moons, we can look for rings, we can even go and measure the atmosphere of these exoplanets. And you just can't do that with the techniques. This new planet is called Kepler 167e, and it has a size of about 90% that of Jupiter, and we can measure that from the transit depth. As the name suggests, we detected this planet in the Kepler data, and we saw just two transits separated by 1,071 days, which is about 2.9 years. Now, the primary Kepler mission only looked at this star for 4.3 years, which means that we're kind of lucky that we saw two transits. If we were unlucky, we could have just had one transit sat right in the middle of that 4.3 year baseline, and with one transit, we would have no idea what the orbital period of this planet is. So you can kind of think of this as almost the, close to the maximum orbital period Kepler can find. So orbital period is basically just the year of that planet. So for the Earth, the orbital period is 365 days. Now through Kepler's laws, we can convert from orbital period into distance from the star, and in turn we can convert that into how much heat that planet receives from its star. So Kepler 167e sits at about twice the distance from its star than the Earth does from the Sun. Its star is a little bit cooler than the Sun because it's an orange dwarf, not a yellow dwarf. And that means that its temperature ends up being about 130 Kelvin. That's only 20 Kelvin warmer than Jupiter itself in our solar system. And for those of you on the Fahrenheit scale, you can think of this as minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very cold. In fact, it's cold on Earth that icy rings, such as those of Saturn, are stable around this planet. So you can rest assured that we're going to be looking for those things pretty soon. Now it's not just the size and the temperature of this planet which makes us call it a Jupiter analog. We can also tell that its orbital shape is close to circular, just like Jupiter. And inside of that orbit there are three extra planets, which are about twice the size of the Earth. So somehow this resembles like a mini solar system. So hopefully I've convinced you that this planet really is a Jupiter analogue. But maybe you're saying to yourself, well you know what, I don't really care about Jupiter analogues. All I care about are habitable planets, habitable worlds. Well actually, Jupiter analogues are pretty important. Well first of all, Jupiter is the most influential player in the solar system. It literally scoops the architecture of the solar system that we see. Moreover, we know when we get to the locations of Jupiter and Saturn, they have dozens of moons. And right now, we're in the midst of a big hunt to try and find the first exomoons, moons around other planets. So hopefully Kepler 167e and other planets that we will find like it in the future represent somewhat of a promised land for exomoon hunting. We've already looked for exomoons around dozens of exoplanets. And all of those exoplanets so far have been about the orbit of the Earth or closer. So we need to go a bit further out. So you can rest assured that the Cool Worlds Laboratory we're going to be seeking these effects, looking for exomoons and even icy rings around these planets, and hopefully finding more of them in the future. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe below to keep up to date with all the latest discoveries at the Core Wars Laboratory, and please comment below and ask me any questions about this discovery. Stay curious.